Have you ever wondered what the best camera settings for macro photography are? Macro photography is a fascinating realm, a journey into the minute, the intricate, the often overlooked. It's a world where the tiniest details come alive, where the ordinary becomes extraordinary. But capturing this unseen world is not without its challenges. It demands precision, a keen eye, and the right camera settings. Think of your camera as a paintbrush. The settings? They're your colors, your textures, your light and shadow. Each adjustment, each tweak, can transform your image, breathe life into it, or cast it into obscurity. High shutter speed to freeze the motion, low ISO for quality, lighting adjustments for clarity, and aperture control for depth. Each setting is a tool, a key to unlock the secrets of the tiny world. So let's dive in, let's explore, let's learn together. Because understanding your camera settings and their impact on macro photography will help you capture stunning macro shots. The first setting we'll delve into is the shutter speed. Now, shutter speed holds a significant role in macro photography. Why, you ask? Well, when you're magnifying your subject for that perfect macro shot, remember any movement is also magnified. This means a slight tremble of your hand, the subtle breeze, or even the tiny movement of your subject could blur your picture. Hence, maintaining a high shutter speed is crucial. It helps freeze the motion, giving you sharp, clear images even when your subject or camera moves. Now, if you're using a tripod, it provides some stability, allowing you to lower your shutter speed a bit. But how much, you wonder? Well, aim for around 1 200th of a second. But what if you're shooting handheld without a tripod? Then you'll need a faster shutter speed. Try to stay above 1 320th of a second. Aim for a shutter speed of around 1 200th with a tripod. And stay above 1 320th without a tripod. Next up, we have ISO settings. The ISO setting on your camera is a crucial component that decides the amount of light that your camera sensor receives. In a nutshell, a higher ISO means your camera sensor is more sensitive to light, and a lower ISO means it's less sensitive. This plays a vital role in macro photography as we often want to capture intricate details with the highest possible image quality. Now you might be wondering why we should use low ISO settings for macro photography. The reason is simple. Low ISO settings result in less digital noise, providing a cleaner, sharper image. This is especially important in macro photography where every minute detail matters. However, remember that lowering your ISO means less light. So, you'll need to balance your ISO with your aperture and shutter speed to ensure you're still getting enough light for a well-exposed photo. Adjust your ISO to keep your aperture and shutter speed within optimal levels. Lighting is another crucial aspect to consider in macro photography. When you're focusing on small, intricate details, having the correct lighting can make or break your image. It's all about illuminating those details without overpowering them or washing them out. You see, when you're shooting small objects, lighting can be a bit tricky. The object's size and close proximity to the camera can sometimes cast shadows, obscuring the details you're trying to highlight. And that's where the magic of a flash comes in. Using a flash can provide that much needed light, but it's not as simple as just turning it on. A flash can sometimes be too harsh, creating stark contrasts and glaring highlights that can distract from the beauty of your subject. So how do we solve this? Well, we use a diffuser. A diffuser softens the light from your flash, spreading it out more evenly. It reduces those harsh shadows and highlights, allowing your subject to shine without being overpowered. It's like the difference between being outside under the harsh noon sun versus the soft, warm glow of the late afternoon. But remember, using a flash is not always necessary or even beneficial. It's often recommended for macro photography, yes, but like everything in photography, it's all about balance. You need to experiment, adjust, and find what works best for your particular subject and scenario. When lighting can be an issue, use a flash with a diffuser to soften the light. It's another tool in your macro photography toolbox ready to help you capture those stunning, detailed images. The next setting worth discussing is the Aperture Priority Mode, a fantastic tool in your photography arsenal, especially when ambient light, like the sun or indoor lighting, is your primary light source. Here's why. Aperture Priority Mode allows you to control the depth of field directly, which is a crucial aspect of macro photography. 
By adjusting the aperture, you can manage how much of your subject is in sharp focus. This can create some stunning effects, like a sharply focused subject against a beautifully blurred background. In macro photography, this mode becomes even more valuable. That's because when you're working with such small subjects, the depth of field becomes incredibly narrow. So having the ability to control this directly can be a game changer. Remember, a smaller aperture number means a wider opening and a shallower depth of field. Conversely, a larger aperture number will give you a narrower opening and a deeper depth of field. Aperture priority mode can be very useful when the source of light in your photo is the sun or other ambient light. Mastering macro photography settings takes more than just knowledge. It's like a painter with a palette of colors where each color represents a different camera setting. The real art lies in knowing how to blend these colors, these settings, to create a masterpiece. Consider shutter speed, ISO, lighting, or aperture priority mode as your colors. Each one of these plays a unique role in the final image. But their magic doesn't lie in isolation. It's the harmonious blend of all these settings that conjures up the perfect macro shot. Now you might ask, how do I find this harmonious blend? The answer is simple yet profound. Practice and experimentation. Just as a painter experiments with different color combinations, you too must experiment with different camera settings. It's through this process of trial and error that you'll discover the optimal configuration for your specific macro photography needs. But remember, the road to mastery isn't a sprint, it's more of a marathon. It requires patience and time. You might not get it right the first time, or the second, or even the third. But that's all right. Each failed attempt is a stepping stone towards your goal. It's an opportunity to learn, to grow, to refine your art. So, go ahead, pick up your camera, dive into the world of macro photography, and start experimenting. Remember, practice and experimentation are the keys to mastering the art of macro photography.